not more advanced than these softwares, but more, but it has more detail than, than like the next category of softwares we'll look at that pull in the ending balances. Also know that when you look at QuickBooks, there's a QuickBooks online and there's a QuickBooks desktop. So you want to consider between those two, do you want the online version or desktop online? You got to pay, uh, you got to pay monthly or something like that. If you get the desktop version, you may still be able to buy just the desktop and you can get an old desktop version for your for your personal finances, which probably would still work, right? Because <laughs> you own it on your desktop. It would probably, all the updates that they put into it, you know, may not impact what you need it for if it's just a basic, you know, software. Although older versions may not then pull in the data directly from the bank as easily. You'll probably need the current. If you want to pull the information directly from your checking account, you might want to go with the online version. Okay. So then we got the financial or balance. Also just note that we have courses on all on these three softwares, not on Quicken. So if you want to get into how to use these softwares, we got a whole lot of material <laughs> on that. So then we got the financial or balance sheet uh, software. So we have like money in Excel. Excel actually has a template that allows you to connect to your bank accounts, which is pretty neat. So if you wanted to use that, you can use actually Excel. I think you need the subscription model to the subscription basis, like Office 365 to do it. But then you can connect to the bank account and it pulls in, like I say, it'll pull in the transactions from from the, your bank too, like your inflows and outflows, but it's not gonna create the financial statements as easily from that. What it does do is pull in the ending balances, like we discussed from like your checking account from your other financial institutions, your investment accounts and your mortgage and all that kind of stuff. And it'll pull that in, creating you a financial statement balance sheet quite easily. So that's that's nice and you, and you can do that just right in Excel. Another one's called personal capital. Now this, this is like a, an investment type of company. So they really, my con conception of them is they're trying to market, of course, people to, to work with for, for investment planning so they might then try to try to contact you, you know, they're, they're going to give you pop ups saying, hey, do you want to talk to a financial planner or what if you were to use that? So you might want to research whether or not that would be appropriate for you. But it does the similar kind of thing as money in Excel. It pulls in the ending balances. It can connect to all your financial institutions, which is really nice because then it can put your it can put if you have multiple different investments, you can put them into one pile and it can actually then sort out where your investments are in terms of what kind of assets you're invested in like are you invested in in you know u.s stocks versus bonds you foreign bonds and whatnot and then it can take that information and then give you some some data in terms of where you might want to diversify your portfolio so this is really future oriented generally it's thought to go out into the future and think about uh, your long-term planning your your retirement planning and stuff like that and it pulls in your current data in order to help you to do that. So if you have a more complicated portfolio, you got investments in a 401k plan, then you might have other investments in an IRA. You have another, you have your spouse has investments over here and you're trying to put it all into one spot so that you can basically then think about what your overall investments are in terms of categories of investments. Then this